This here is actually, this is worth talking about for just a couple of minutes because this is also what not only, I don't know a, a exactly, you know, what you do for a living, um, but um, talking about like, should we say other programs such as Fusion 360. So at Autodesk, we have something called Inventor, what is, I would say our best 3D CAD that can handle, you know, thousands and thousands of components. But then we also have another program called Rabbit, what is for the building industry. So one of the things we talk a lot about is manufacturing for the architecture and construction environment. Um, and, you know, so for example, you will use something like, it could be Fusion, it could be Inventor to make uh, an air conditioner unit that goes, for example, on, you know, a shopping mall. Um, and that air conditioner is full of details, have every bolt, nut, pipe, whatever, right? Um, because that needs to be manufactured. So you would use Inventor for something like that. But then the architect that you're using Rabbit would like to have the whole building, would like to have the air conditioner on the roof, but do they need that to all its details, right? The architect don't really care about the air conditioner with all his you know, nuts and bolts and pipes and everything in it because he just needs it more for like an, an, an area. So the reason I want to talk about this is how detailed do we want to go when we are creating um, things like that. And just to give you an example, go back into Fusion. Um, <clears throat> if you go out here, and I honestly don't know how for where this is located, but if I search garage, you will see, so I'm gonna just take a second, searching the internet here. Um, you will actually find that I have modeled up the garage that I'm sitting in. Um, because when I started doing my workshop, so here it is, let's open up this file here. Um, what you actually are seeing right here is actually my desk uh, that I'm sitting at right now. Some of you guys, there's actually a video out on YouTube on where I'm putting this desk together, where I'm going through, kind of see this broken down into different different sections. I actually have my YouTube channel called up here. So if you go to make anything, um, and you go, which one was it? Biggest one man desk in New York. There you see, that is my desk you just uh, saw a quick view of. But in that video, I actually go through and laying out this desk and I actually also, I make it. So in the end, that should be, there I am putting it together. That desk is what you're seeing in in there. Um, so, and, and this, you know, eating my own dog food, I probably have to admit that this is not a perfect model. Um, <laughs> to be honest, let's turn on, actually, this is actually a multi-body. It started out being multi-body. If I turn off the, the desk here. This is my garage, um, my workshop garage, where I'm actually sitting up on the second floor here. Um, you will see there's two garage doors. There's a big bench. There's a staircase that is not modeled up. And by the way, if I hit A in here, you will see that my appearances, I had a, I had thrown a glass appearance on here. So I'm assigned to delete that. Um, so here you can maybe see it a little bit, a little bit better where we have a, you know, a, garage, a couple of garage stores. Um, I have the office walls. So this is my office where I'm sitting right now, up here on the second floor, that table I broke down. Um, but what I wanted to show you is that in here, you will actually also see that, I have some different sections. Um, I created some different section views in here. You will see that there is one called the Dodds Caravan. That is actually the wife's van that is parked in there in, this, in the winter time. That is just a block. There's also a Honda Civic that used to be the wife's before <laughs> I'm not driving around in it. Um, and I also see I had a tour mark in here. I was trying to fit in a tour mark at some point. That project have, uh, have kind of uh, died a little bit. But my point is, how detailed do we want to be when we are creating things here? So very similar. I didn't go as much details as AA has because in his, he has the doors. It, whoops, he has the doors in here, um, you know, and, and his maybe is a little bit more, um, you know, detailed. But 
The problem with going too detailed when you're modeling things up like this is of course that the more detail you're putting in here, at some point, the software is gonna start bucking down. So I kept this very crude right now. We can all agree, agree on that. But if you wanted to start adding detail into it, there's a couple of different ways you could do it. So if we, for example, look at these garage doors openings here. So right now they're just cut through. So let me just first of all tell you how I would do this if I was going to model this up personally. If I decided that I was going to put the garage door in there, I would probably model one that would be open and one that would be closed. Um, one on each side. And my reason for that is that as soon as we start, um, and I would probably just do it maybe even as a one kind of like a body environment, because I'm really just looking to show that one can be open and one can be closed. Um, the more detail you're getting in there, the more heavier the model is going to be. And at some point, it's going to start struggling. It's just the, the nature of a mechanical CAD software like Fusion, Inventor, SolidWorks, and those stuff. At some point, you're going to start running into issues. Now, if you're comparing just talking Autodesk, uh, Fusion is going to hit that threshold a lot sooner than, than for example, Inventor would. Um, Inventor is what I call Big Boy CAD. That deck would be able to handle all of this where Fusion probably would at some point. So for me, it, it, it depends on what your end goal is. My, for me, I would model one where the door would be closed and I would add one where the door would be open. Um, and But probably still put in, you know, um, you know, the... the the rails and stuff like that and break it down into the different movable sections. Now, if you did decide that you do want to make this more details, you want more stuff in there, then one other thing you could do was that you, instead of just modeling it up all within one file, is you could kind of start bringing it in uh, to, to the specific file, right? Uh, as kind of like a keep them separate. What probably would mix, if you want to get into all the details of the garage stores, it probably makes sense to kind of break it away from the main building. Um, just because the file is going to be too big, it's going to be hard to handle. And I have to start having a hard time figuring out where the heck you are here. So one way to do that is if you're looking up at our triad here, you can see that I modeled this with the old triad system. Um, one way to do this would be, okay, Let's look at where the origin is on my model. And I was actually this, um, made a decision when I started modeling up this old garage that I created a zero, zero corner. And you can see that, that that corner down here, because this is where I normally come in every day. Um, so this is my zero, zero corner. So one thing you could do was we could measure from that corner. We could measure over to maybe where the garage door starts. You see, this was done in inches, 210, 206 inches. We can remember that. And if we're looking at the big garage door, maybe we're looking at how wide that garage door is. It's about 117 inches and 118 inches tall. Um, so what you could do, the way I would do this would be, let me just close that out, would be I would open up a new document and you can see that my triad have kind of like flipped around here. So I'm just going to go up and change that back to how I used to have it. What used to be the Y direction. Apply that for a second. Open the new document up. There we go. Uh, so the reason I'm doing this is because I want to make sure this is aligned. So if you're looking at the front here and looking at the front here, if I turn the origin on, I would start creating my detailed garage. What if it's going to be details now, we're talking probably about components. But I would do a layout sketch on the front plane. And let me just draw a rectangle here. And that rectangle is going to be... Oh, I'm in... Uh, hang on. I never switched units over either. I like to do my videos in metric because Americans switch back and forth. It is a harder for us Europeans. So in inches... I would go ahead and create the garage door opening here. So it was 118 and 117 wide, I think it was. 
and then we maybe do like a coincidence in between there to the origin and then i would place that dimension from the origin to here what was 206 right so i'm drawing up now a file where and it's the sketch where i'm using that origin and i'm now drawing from that origin in my new file and now you could start breaking this down into to new components because you know that this garage door is going to have a million different uh components in here here um so let's just go ahead and um you know extrude something so you can see what i'm talking about so this part here would have all these different components that there is inside of a garage door how detailed you want to get um but what happens is that when i save this i'm just going to save it i don't even know where the garage is saved i'm just going to save this into our project when i go here and i now say all right let me insert the doll i just saved oh sorry when we go in here and say insert into our current design it's giving a warning that it will not be linked because they're two different projects i don't know where the garage i can't remember where I install the garage but what you will see when i bring it in you see how the new garage store comes in exactly on the right place you see that like it's it's located um, and if i had them in the same project they would be linked back and forth that would be the ideal thing for me to do um, to have them in the same project now what this means is that i'm not going to save this is that um, in our door project if i open that up i could now do all the details in here but i know that you know it's placed in the right place and the reason i would do this is that this would mean that i don't have to worry about um i wouldn't have to worry about joints and things like that it kind of like just falling into into place so i hope i hope that this was was useful um for UAA, just in the sense that when you're working, let me bring AA's garage back on. Uh, when you're working with something like this, how detailed you want to go is up to you. But know that the more detail you're putting in there, um, you know, the worse it's going to get. Um, and, and then somebody's going to ask me, how much is too much detail? Um, I did the plastic injection mold, what is probably my biggest assembly. I think it has about 200 or 300 components in that one. And that's not a problem. That one is reacting perfectly fine. I would probably think that with Fusion 360, when you hit about a, I don't know what, it depends on a lot of things. But, you know, if you're getting over that, if you're getting to between 500 and 1,000 components, you probably have to be start being very calculated about how you do things. And you might see some, some performance issues. So you might want to test it, test it around. That's why, for me... It's all about what is your end goal. Um, Fusion 360 as a mechanical CAD software is not a great software to make a movie where you're walking through the garage and doors are opening and closing and doing all kinds of crazy things because that's just not that software for that. I hope that was uh, useful. Thumbs up if you like that. Thumbs down if you don't. I'm gonna take another one from, from AA.